am I audible now? Yes, sir. So, Dr. Vishakha Siddhasani, she is a doctor, she is a columnist, and uh, she is the Bollywood uh, celebrities go to medical nutritionist. She, is a, uh, she has a fellowship in nutrition and specializes in treating lifestyle ailments like obesity, diabetes, PCOS, polycystic ovaries, and dyslipidemias, combining medicine and nutrition. She is the ex vice president of the South Bombay Medical Association of Doctors. She has been a co columnist and been interviewed by several publications like Main Vogue. Cosmopolitan, Indian Express, Hindustan Times, The Traveller, etc. She is on air for many television channels like NDTV, CNBC, Cyrus Brosha, and for English, uh, for India's largest uh, podcast. She has uh, received many uh, awards and accolades. She is the Best Nutritionist of the Year Award by Vogue in 2017. She is a columnist for Wall Street Journal Partner, National Newspaper, M and uh, Mint. Expert panelist in uh, Nika.com, which is the largest wellness and beauty website. So you can uh, follow her on Instagram on at uh, Dr. V. Over to Dr. Vishaka. Thank you, Dr. Gautam. Am I audible? Yeah. All right. Uh, as I was saying earlier, thank you, Pratik. I think this is a fantastic initiative. I second Roshni for that. Very uh, unlike a pharma company to be doing a lifestyle management program. So kudos to you. Uh, thank you. And thank you so much. Pharma company. I hope this is the first of many. Yeah. Okay. So since we're talking about, let me check on time. Okay, so since we're talking about immunity vis-a-vis -vis, uh, diabetes, let's first understand what is immunity. Immunity basically, put very simply, is just protection from disease. Our body is constantly attacked by pathogens. You know, we are walking uh, bare feet, we are opening doorknobs, we are using public bathrooms, public transport, eating on the street, and we are constantly attacked by pathogens. And yet we are not constantly sick. Thank God for that. That's because our immune system is doing a fantastic job at keeping these pathogens at bay. But sometimes we succumb to this. The, the, the pathogens get the better of us and we fall sick. Why is that? And what can we do to improve our immune system? I'm here to tell you, no matter where you are on your health pyramid, whether you're healthy, you're young, you've got a robust immune system, whether you're sick with a chronic lifestyle disease, be it type 2 diabetes, be it cancer, be it a heart disease, wherever you are on the health pyramid, you can improve your immunity and your health at large just by making a few lifestyle changes. So we're not talking about magic pills and potions because they really don't help. And we've heard those enough and more during COVID. Uh, so we're not going to talk about those. We're going to talk about real changes that are sustainable, lifelong, that can help you reverse type 2 diabetes and improve your immunity and health at large. So even in COVID-19, we have seen that two people who are attacked by the same pathogen, be it a bacteria or a virus, it could be two people who are attacked by this, but they respond differently. Why is it that some people are completely asymptomatic? They don't even know that they have got even COVID, for instance. We find out after we have done the antibody tests at the clinic, right? That they, and they have no clue. And yet other people are not only symptomatic, but they need ICU care. Some sadly even succumb to it. Now, when the virus is the same, when the pathogen is the same, then two people should also then respond the same, but they, what we don't. Obviously, then it's our immune system that is different from two different people. So what can we do to change, to enhance this immune system? Therefore, now this might be a slightly revolutionary thought, but this is something I feel very passionately about. So I think what ties all these comorbidities, like we have also seen in COVID-19, the people who are most frail, the people who are affected the most, and probably even sadly succumb the most, are the people with comorbidities. They are the ones who are obese, they are the ones with type 2 diabetes, with hypertension, with heart disease. So what is it that ties all these comorbidities? What is the common denominator? The common denominator for most of these, if not all, is chronic inflammation. So chronic inflammation is only a result of wrong lifestyle and it is over a long period of time and that is the cause of all these chronic diseases. So there are two types of inflammations. One is acute inflammation and one is chronic. Acute inflammation is actually good for you. In fact, it's life-saving. So you get hit, you get knocked by something, you get a wound, and your WBCs go immediately to try and protect it, right? We see pus being formed, we see, we, we see a scab, we see a wound. If that wouldn't happen, if that inflammation wouldn't happen, those 
wounds would linger indefinitely and fester like we see very often in uncontrolled diabetics, type 2 diabetics, you know, who've got uncontrolled sugars and their wounds just linger. That is your body's immune system, your innate immune system that is working for you in your benefit. But when your immune system after doing its job does not come down to base level because of bad lifestyle habits, then you have got a chronic inflammation playing at hand. And then you have these WBCs that go and attack something. But because there is nothing that has attacked your body, there is no wound, there is no injury, right? You're going to be stay in a state of chronic inflammation. And as a result, it's going to attack your own body. It's going to attack your, your, your own cells. It's going to attack your uh, joints. It's going to attack your blood vessels. And that is what leads to autoimmune disease. It leads to type 2 diabetes. It leads to obesity. It leads to polycystic ovaries, all hormonal imbalances. So the reason I am saying this is if you rectify this chronic inflammation through lifestyle changes, you can almost certainly improve your immunity and reverse type 2 diabetes and even other metabolic diseases. You know, in most type 2 diabetics, like Dr. Roshni said, you, you'll see them overweight. Type 2, type 1 are the ones who are really skinny, but type 2 are what we call apple-shaped. They've got the visceral fat. That is the dangerous fat. That is the fat around your midriff that covers maybe even your, your liver, giving you a fatty liver, right? Now, this is because of chronic inflammation, your WBCs are going and attacking that and they're going and attacking your uh, fat cells, which means when you are overweight, when you are type 2 diabetic, you're already in a state of chronic inflammation, which means your immunity is already low, right? So that's your baseline. You're starting with being what we call metabolically dysfunctional. So what is the lifestyle change that we can make? Let's start with food. What is this anti-inflammatory diet that's also an immune building diet. Okay, so this is a diet that is high in good quality fat, that has got a medium amount of protein, not too much, and is low in carbohydrate. Now, you know, we have all historically heard that fats are bad for us, but it is the bad fats that are bad for us. It is the seed oils that are bad for us, and those are the pro-inflammatory fats. We can talk about those later. The good fats for you when you are low in in but when you are low in fat consumption what happens why do we say you are why do i say that you're low in immunity or dr roshni and i'm hoping dr gautam will second me on that you know that we we need good fats good fats are protective your cells are made up of a lipid layer and that is nothing but a fat layer so when we are attacked by a pathogen be it a bacteria or a fungus or a virus you're giving it entry into that cell, which means you're allowing for it to come and attack you and your immune system does not respond well. Instead of uh, rejecting it, you're allowing it to penetrate into your cell because there is no fat there. So when you're low in fat, you're automatically low in immunity. Secondly, your vitamins A, D, E, and K, these are all fat soluble vitamins. It needs fat to be absorbed. So we heard everybody now taking, you know, massive doses of vitamin D because it's very good for immunity to a point we even see toxicity at the clinic. But on the other hand, if you're low in fat and you're taking these vitamins, you're not absorbing anything. So these are just, it's, it's a waste of these vitamins. That's point two. Three, as far as diabetes is concerned, nothing balances your hormones as much as fats do because the insulin surge of all the three macros, carbohydrate, protein and fat happens the least with fat. Carbohydrate will give you a spike. Proteins will also give you a spike, less of a spike, but it will give you. But your fats will give you the least amount of spike. So you're not going to get that insulin surge. You're not going to get that leptin fluctuation that Dr. Roshni was talking about, right? So it is absolutely important that you don't fear your fats. You just eat your good ones. Um, the problem with fats is reheating fats and having bad fats because those become rancid. Those cause carcinogens. Um, you know, so to that, and like I said, the seed oils are a problem. So don't fear your fats, eat the good ones. Secondly, proteins. Now we know proteins are very important for you. They're the building blocks of your, your body, of your muscles, of everything. Yeah, the thing is, we need antibodies to fight any infection. Antibodies are made up of protein. So if you're deficient in protein in your diet, you're not going to form the antibodies. So low protein, low antibodies, low immunity. It's a direct link. So you need to up your protein to have the antibodies to fight your 
immunity to to enhance your immunity against any pathogen and this is true for any person across the board not just a diabetic you need that protein that being said most people are gung ho especially you know uh, dr gautam would probably be facing this more people who are exercise enthusiasts want to do 2 grams of protein per kilogram body weight and they want to build their muscle i am completely against that exceptionally high amount of protein increases what we call igf1 which is insulin like growth factor which is a known carcinogen it increases your chances of getting cancer it decreases your lifespan so be very careful you need protein it's very important but you don't need more than probably 0.7 gram per kilogram of lean body mass so you need to calculate that accordingly of course if you're into competitive competitive sports then the equation will change a little bit but we're talking about the, the common housewife people like you and me who are just like you know uh, working in, in offices and clinic third macronutrient the most vilified of the lot carbohydrate now we get asked this at the clinic all the time doctor can we eat carbohydrates are carbohydrates going to kill us you know do we have to go off carbohydrates for the rest of your life let's understand something all carbohydrates will increase blood sugar some less than the other but they all will a savory carbohydrate you can be having a salted biscuit it will still increase are but there's no sugar in this it is a carbohydrate it's going to convert into sugar in your body and you are going to get the insulin and the sugar spike it's going to happen your complex carbs we have two kind of carbs simple and complex the complex carbs actually are good for you they are the ones that come from the green leafy vegetables from the fruits of course we recommend low, low glycemic fruits those are absolutely fine as long as you're not doing five fruits in the morning on an empty stomach everything in moderation right because you know dr vishaka said fruits are fine i'm going to start on a fruit diet tomorrow morning please don't don't hold me responsible please that's not what we are saying yeah everything has to be measured when it comes to carbs the simple sugars are the problem worst of them being sugars we cannot talk about immunity without talking about the impact on sugar sugar is the single most inflammatory food group as far as i'm concerned sugar sugar should not be a food group it should be a food like substance and because reducing inflammation is key you need to completely eliminate sugar because sugar causes the inflammation sugar converts into the fat that we were talking about that accumulates around the belly especially in type 2 diabetics especially fructose which is your simplest kind of sugar is probably the number one cause of all chronic disease especially of type 2 diabetes so if you want to reverse your type 2 diabetes you need to give up fructose in all forms which is non negotiable so i'm not even of the opinion that it's okay to have one can of juice no it is not you eat your you eat your sugar you eat it with your protein you eat it with your other complex carb you eat it with fat so you feel satiated don't drink your 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 sugars no liquid sugars liquid sugars are out of bound no honey no maple syrup no agave no doctor but it's organic it's good for me my grandmother ate it my grandfather ate it doesn't matter your grandparents were 10 20 times more active than we were thank you doc uh, roshni uh, they they were 20 times more active than we were they didn't have stress levels if you are trying to replicate someone's lifestyle don't take one part of it follow what they did completely i don't know people who plow in farms right now and you know who lift weights like this you know now we have staff we give instructions so if you're going to follow somebody's lifestyle follow that in totality don't pick what is convenient to you right so that covers your food groups so remember sugar is completely completely when you when you have more fructose you have leptin resistance which leads to type 2 diabetes how much sugar how much fructose is enough about 50 grams of sugar now let me tell you one can of aerated drinks i won't name them is more than 50 grams of fructose that goes and converts causes fatty liver in a diabetic that can go so the reason why fats are not bad for you and fats are vilified is because the carbohydrate the sugar goes and converts into fat and the fat is what causes blockages in various blood blood vessels so the fat will go the fructose will go and convert into fat because the extra calories have to go somewhere right and then in the eye it will cause diabetic retinopathy in your um, uh, kidney it will cause uh, diabetic nephropathy so you get all these conditions and people say oh but that's because of my extra fat intake no it is not it's because of your extra fructose intake your extra sugars right so that is the part on your diet now what is the other aspect 
of course vitamins i'm not going to cover the vitamins in detail because i think vitamins have been done to death but to give you a brief vitamin d vitamin c zinc and magnesium i think are very important especially for diabetes especially vitamin d we call it a vitamin but it's actually a steroid um, it's a steroid hormone it covers more than it helps with 300 metabolic processes in the body it is a very good anti inflammatory it's an antioxidant it's an immune modulator don't overdo the vitamin d like i said we are seeing toxicity of vitamin d get a blood analysis done and then check to give you a practical tip about 15 to 30 minutes in the sunlight between about 11 am to 3 pm should do the trick barring that maybe a thousand are you dose this is not a medical prescription you need to speak to your doctor i because this you know these are all fat soluble vitamins and they can cause toxicity i'm giving you a ballpark there are studies to show that small doses of vitamin d every day is much better than taking a bolus dose of 60000 then you have vitamin c now when you have diabetes by default you're in a state of oxidative stress vitamin c is a very strong antioxidant so it prevents this oxidative stress at least from deteriorating so it's a good idea to take vitamin c again because there is so you know people are just popping in 1000 mg of vitamin c the way to take vitamin c is to split it take 500 mg in the morning and take 500 mg at night this is because the t half life that means the amount of time it is in your blood stream is not more than 8 hours so if you want it to be absorbed well break it up into two doses one more reason to quit sugar when you take a diet high in sugar and you take vitamin c the vitamin c competes with the receptors in the cells to absorb the sugar as a result you're absorbing the sugar and your vitamin c is not getting absorbed so you might be taking 1000 mg of vitamin c a day but you're just paying for expensive urine because it's getting peed out right so no vitamin c uh no no uh, sugar when you're having anything but especially when you're taking vitamin c the other thing i forgot to mention when we're talking about sugar is when you take more than 75 mg of sugar or fructose specifically your immune cells your immune function drops to about 50% for the next 5 hours so the one practical tip i tell everybody is for whatever reason if you must have because you know all of us have our moments and we you know we're celebrating someone's birthday and now diwali and all of that and if you are going to eat something sweet at least don't eat something so don't repeat the sweet within 5 hours because you're sure shot causing that immunity your immune response to decrease even further so eat it and if you have to eat something you eat it maybe at night or the next day but not within 5 hours there lots of study is done to prove this now and you need to take zinc back to your vitamins zinc and magnesium zinc really helps with gut he- gut health like dr roshni said gut health is very very important for your immune response i will be talking about it in a bit so you need to take your zinc the way to take zinc is to take it with protein because it gets absorbed the best so that's how you take it magnesium has a whole host of benefits so whether you're taking it um, to help with constipation you're taking it just to sleep well because sleep is very important and it increases your immunity and magnesium helps with that take your magnesium speak to your doc about what kind of magnesium you need to take there are many sorts of magnesium few more bioavailable than the other okay then the other lifestyle change is you need to focus on your gut health hippocrates said all disease begins in the gut in allopathy we are actually just beginning to figure this out 70% of our immune system is in our gut so we need to take really really good care of our gut health right now our microbiome is not just in your stomach it is from entry point to exit point that makes your microbiome and we have 100 trillion cells in this microbiome which is 10 times more than our human cells so we are actually more bacteria than we are human but that's the way it is and these bacteria do us a world of good we have a symbiotic relationship with them we give them a place to stay in return they do so much more for us they help us digest our food they help reduce autoimmune disease they help reduce the propensity to get chronic diseases like type 2 diabetes uh autoimmune diseases like rheumatoid arthritis uh, psoriasis so so many so many, many many things right so you need to really take good health of good care of your gut health how do you do that you increase your prebiotics you increase your probiotics prebiotics are food for your your gut 
that come through fiber in your vegetables and your fruit. Probiotics you get uh, either through supplements or in Indian food, through yogurt, through pickles, through all fermented food. But it's very important to make sure that your gut health is in shape so that we don't have what is called leaky gut. When you've got leaky gut, what is supposed to be in your gut actually leaves and goes to distant parts of your body and causes chronic inflammation. And it's, it is that chronic inflammation then that causes type 2 diabetes and other autoimmune disease. So we really need to take care of good gut health. Um, you know, most type 2 diabetics also really um, take a lot of artificial sweeteners. Now, artificial sweeteners, while they are safe for anything, is uh, safer than having uh, sugar, they also cause dysbiosis, which means it changes the, um, the good and the ba bad bacteria ratio and actually causes more harm than good long term. So if you must have an artificial sweetener, you do it, you know, you start small and then you develop a palate for no sugar at all over a period of time. Difficult to do, but, you know, it's something that you need to take care of if you're um, you know, if you feel that after taking something that I am feeling bloated, I'm feeling belching, you know, there is a gastric problem, then it is a good idea to get rid of that artificial sugar or maybe even change that artificial sugar. That's your gut health. Then we would talk about sleep. Sleep is so much more important than, you know, we call it beauty sleep and will help, you know, prevent our dark circles. I think I still have some dark circles, but, uh, you know, it's so much more than just that. It will help almost everything. We spent one third of our life sleeping. That means if you live till you're 90, 30 years of your life you're sleeping. And yet we talk about nutrition, we talk about fitness, we talk about everything else, and we don't really talk about sleep. I'm not saying the others aren't important. They're very important. But sleep is equally, if not more important. So we need to discuss sleep and its impact on diabetes, on, on immunity. When you are sleep deprived, you, your cortisol levels rise. When your cortisol levels rise, you hold on to fat. When your cortisol levels rise, your blood sugar rises. When we, we know uncontrolled blood sugar, a rise in cortisol, all of that will reduce immunity. So you really, really need to work on that. Also, uh, it also causes an imbalance with your leptin and ghrelin hormone. So your ghrelin hormone goes up, which is your hunger hormone. And your satiety hormone does not function well. Your leptin does not function well, optimally. So it also, when you have bad sleep or a bad circadian rhythm, which means you're not sleeping according to, you know, the, the fixed time, you're according to your biological clock, then you are going to get overweight. Overweight meaning you're going to have uh, junk eating at night. I don't know anybody at night who says, I want to eat salads and broccoli sticks. You're going to eat chips and you're going to eat farsan and you're going to eat all of that. That's carbohydrate. That is fructose. That's going to cause your weight around your abdomen, which is type 2 diabetic. Worst for it. Up your sugar. Reduce your immunity. So you need to stop that. Now, it's okay for me to say that you need to sleep well, but some people are insomniac. So what, what do we do? How do we rectify, um, you know, your sleeping habits? You have to... Um, Engineer your sleep sleeping pattern, which means you have to maintain a sleep hygiene. You need to sleep at the same time. You need to be off all sorts of blue light, like, like Dr. Roshni said, because the melatonin production then gets suppressed. Uh, melatonin is also a very good um, anti-inflammatory and, uh, you know, it's, an, it's natural. So you, you should make sure that you're switching off all your, your blue lights, whether it's from your LED, whether it's your television, whether it's your phone. Um, you need to stop caffeine, you need to stop uh, alcohol, especially close to bedtime. So, so many patients will come and say, you know, but alcohol helps me sleep. Alcohol sedates you. That is not the same as sleep. So it is not the same. Sedation is not the same as sleep. It actually changes what we call the REM sleep. And REM sleep is what we need for rest and restoration. We think that the mind and the brain is turned off and the body is turned off when we sleep, which is not true. It's actually like a housekeeper, which, uh, you know, he comes into action at night for rest and repair. So that happens at night because in the day it's too busy either digesting your food or, you know, in activities, which does not happen at night. So it's very important to eliminate your alcohol close to bedtime, especially caffeine, smoking, which increases your adrenaline, increases your heart rate not to eat sugars at night, not to binge eat, to maintain a cool room, a temperature between 16 to 20 degrees, because when it reduces your, uh, your core body temperature, that kind of initiates in you into good, deep, rested sleep. 
So these changes are very, very important. If you sleep well, according to your circadian rhythm, and you don't have disrupted sleep, it actually helps with every part of your immune system to give you an optimum response to any pathogen that's attacking you. Okay, you will also be surprised if you're doing everything right if you're a diabetic. I have patients who say that we just don't sleep well, and those are the patients with, who spike their sugars. So be careful and just, you know, if, if you're, you're eating right and you're exercising and doing everything, just please look into your sleep and see what you can do to change your sleep routine and, you know, your, your sleep, or what, what we call sleep hygiene that needs to change. And last is stress and the role of stress. You know, Dr. Uh, Sangani has already told us about it, but, you know, it's very easy for us to say we need to be calm, you know, but stress happens. It happens to the calmest of us. It happens to the happiest of us. What do we do? Again, there are two types of stress. You have stress that increases your sympathetic nervous system, which is fight and flight, which is actually great for you. It's also life saving. So if you're attacked by somebody and you need to run, it's your sympathetic nervous system that comes into overdrive. If I am like right now, I'm looking at the clock. I'm probably in sympathetic nervous, oh, you know, SNS overdrive because I'm saying, oh my God, I need to speak fast to finish this lecture. But if you're doing that or if you're trying to finish an exam, you need that acute stress. It helps you. It helps you meet targets. It's good stress, life-saving. When we have parasympathetic, uh, when our body does not, once it's finished with that, does not go into this parasympathetic nervous system then, which is rest and digest, then your sugar spike, your cortisol levels go up and you have uncontrolled sugars. And again, you have everything else then that reduces your immunity because of that, especially if you're diabetic. So, it's all okay, like I said, for me to say don't stress, but things happen, life happens. What you can do despite having a high stress life, despite the pandemic, despite everything, is you can breathe correctly. If you breathe to have the right meditation and right breathing technique, it's amazing how you can actually go into this parasympathetic system, nervous system in almost 10 minutes, you can activate your PNS. Now, I won't have enough time to tell you what, what you can do in detail, but I will tell you that meditation, especially in the morning and last thing at night and breathing correctly. What is breathing correctly? It's something we do 24-7, 365 days of the year. And we don't even know that we're breathing. We're not even aware of it, right? But you, a lot of us are mouth breathers. Mouth is not meant for breathing. It's your nose that's meant for breathing. It's also a part of your immune system because it's got ciliary hair that humidifies it, that's a filtration plant, that's a part of your innate immune system. So you need to breathe through your nose, you need to breathe with your mouth shut, you need to have deep abdominal breathing, not thoracic breathing, and you need to have an exhalation that's longer than your inhalation. I can show you in a few minutes that if you're really stressed, you can move from a sympathetic to a parasympathetic nervous system state in a few minutes of breathing correctly. If you just inhale and you exhale slowly, you are triggering your PNS. You are also triggering your vagus nerve, which is what we call the queen of the parasympathetic nervous system, right? You know, when we say you um, wash your face with really cold water in the morning and suddenly you feel alert and refreshed, that is one way of actually triggering your vagus nervous system. So there is a science to it and that suddenly wakes you up and you feel nice and calm and refreshed. The other ways of doing that is through singing and through humming. And you can also do humming through breathing. Very important thing I forgot to mention. When you breathe through your nose and exhale really slowly, I hope I'm on time, and you exhale, two minutes, and exhale really slowly, you, see, you, you actually create nitric oxide. Nitric oxide, very different from nitrous oxide that the, that the dentist uses laughing gas. Nitric oxide increases your oxygenation in your lung 10 to 15 fold. There are lots of studies now being doing, being done for COVID-19 to see how especially diabetics and people with chronic disease can benefit with inhalation of nitric oxide. This is my thinking. If your body can create nitric oxide 24 seven at your disposal, anytime in 10 minutes, why would you with the same chemical molecule that's created artificially, why wait till a certain scientific study is, you know, out there until we have a cure when your body has its own, we're not no cure, but at least it will help. 
So you inhale and you inhale correctly. And if you Google it, I can happy to tell you later, there are lots of ways to increase this nitric oxide production. And that will actually help with the immune response. It will also help you not only it increases the NK killer cells. There's a study published in the PubMed how Sudarshan Kriya can actually help doing this. So it's these are scientific studies. So if you eat right, if you reduce your stress, if you breathe correctly, Dr. Uh, Gautam will talk about exercise, of course. If you keep your gut in good health, uh, you know, you, these are lifestyle things that will not only enhance your immunity, they will enhance your health, they will reverse your diabetes, they will reverse your obesity, your insulin resistance, your leptin resistance, and it's a gateway to clean, good health. Thank you.